Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade repair video for you today. We don't get these in too often because in our state, these are actually illegal to operate. We are not supposed to really uh, mess with these that much. However, this one uh, is not uh, to be put out on location or anything like that. We're just working on one that we found um, to repair the thing and do a little video showing how they work. Almost for a historical thing. All right, how about that, folks? We're just doing history here. We're not trying to gamble. <laughs> that would be illegal. We wouldn't do that. But uh, in the state that we are in, I don't want to say it too loud because uh, the algorithm is listening. Uh, in the state that we are in, they made these illegal about, it's probably been 20 years now, maybe a little more than that. But it used to be, these came out in like the early 80s. It used to be these were all over the place. And it, basically every little gas station had a couple of these in it. And people would sit there, play a quarter at a time. It says right on it, for amusement only. Uh, they would sit there and play a little poker game, quarter at a time, and win a bunch of credits. Now, the operators may have operated them a little gray. Let me see about this one. Let me see if I see anything interesting on the back of it here. Oh yeah. Look at this, there's a button on the back. I wonder what that's for. Okay, so as you see, it's for amusement only. So you play it, it's a quarter of play, and you're gambling on it. Again, we're not doing it, because it's illegal. Uh, but you would gamble on them, and let's say you won, you know, so let's say a quarter gives you one credit, so that's four credits for a dollar. Let's say you ended up with, oh, I don't know, 400 credits on it. So that would be $100, okay? So this is how it worked, all right? Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> In some of these places, and I would never have anything to do with this. This is wrong. I gotta lock all them people up. They, I'm glad they're all in prison now, serving hard time for doing this crap. Some of the places, the little gas station, you get 400 credits, and then you go up to the person at the front desk and you say, "Hey, I got 400 credits on the poker machine," <laughs> and then they go, "I'll meet you over there," and they tiptoe over and they look, and sure enough. It has 400 credits on it. So they go, okay, well, I owe you $100. And then they hit this button. It's called a knockoff switch. And it makes it where now you have zero credits on it, and they give you 100 bucks. Now, like I said, I would never have anything to do with that. That's horrible. I don't think they should have done it. It would. They, I'm glad those people got long, lengthy prison sentences. I'm just talking about some of the horrible things that used to happen in this state, and damn it, it's a good thing that it's done now. Okay, but that's how it used to work. So this is one of those machines, probably made a freaking fortune at some point. Uh, and we're going to see if we can get it to work. There's other stuff drilled in it. There's a hole here. These operators would do all kinds of stuff, just, you know, changing the things. Um, the door that goes here is busted off and it's laying in there. We'll fix that up. There's a couple little metal things, I guess, so money can roll down in there or something. Warning, electrical plug must be disconnected from outlet before servicing machine. Switch supplied on back of machine is for TV only and does not disrupt current to the PC board. So you have a coin back here there's another one there the quarters roll in they land in in uh if it takes it they land in this pipe it goes down hits the metal chute and lands in a bucket in the middle of the game how cool is that so we have a meter here 223,000 quarters so fifty-five thousand dollars wonder how many times it rolled over <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if that was the coin counter. I don't know. Okay. You have a power supply transformer, probably an isolation transformer for the monitor. There's a power supply behind it there, too. 
who knows what that does. There's a little cheap speaker uh, and then a couple boards. I have no clue if any of this works, but we have two boards. So there's one mounted and then one in front of it. So one of those may not work. Maybe the other one works, but we'll see what we can do. Um, but this is what we're starting with. All right. Now, these things were notorious for having heavy, heavy burn in on them. So the, the monitor tube has five poker cards burned in on it. And the reason is because that's what the whole game was. It would come up and you would get five cards and, you know, the, the denomination of the card would change, but the card would be in the exact same spot the entire time the game was on. So it would just burn and burn and burn. And uh, that's how that worked. So down here you have a play button, play, the, play a credit, a deal button, a stand button, a draw button, and a cancel button. So you would put in a quarter and maybe, you know, maybe you put in a dollar's worth and you got four credits. I'm just making this up. I don't know how many credits you get for a quarter. We'll find out. So you hit play, but let's say you wanted to bet a dollar at a time. Well, you'd hit play four times and then it would tell you on here that you have four credits that you're playing as opposed to four credits that are just in the machine. Uh, and then you hit deal and it throws five cards up. So you hit the discard button for each one that you don't want. Okay, and let's say you mess up, you hit cancel. It kind of resets it. Okay, and then uh, basically you were just playing poker against the machine. Now, I always thought these things were silly. I mean, if you were going to actually gamble on them, I don't know why people did it, but you're playing math. I mean, it's a it's literally a damn computer you're playing against. You are literally playing math against the computer. It ain't gonna mess up. I understand that you could the way that the way the percentages work, you could get ahead, you know, a little bit. I don't know about this particular one, high low double up joker poker. But on a lot of the later ones, at least, like the pot of gold machines, uh, I worked for an operator that had a bunch of those. It worked a percentage that was actually a lot more fair than you would think. They would set it to about 92%. But what that meant was you had a 92% chance of winning your money back each hand. So it's kind of hard to understand the way they did the statistics. Some of you folks that are software people will, will get this a little better. But let's say you put in a dollar and you play the dollar. You've got a 92% chance of winning the dollar back. So let's say you you win 50 cents on that hand. Um, so that lowers the percentage a little bit. And it just tries to keep it near that 92% average. But each time you're playing, keep in mind, you're, you're basically losing money. So the more you play, the more money you lose. But you could, theoretically, the way it works, you could walk in and win the jackpot on the very first freaking game. And then, theoretically, now you're not even going to believe this, but the way it was set up, the statistics, you know, you could theoretically win a jackpot on the very next hand. It just wasn't very likely to happen, but it could happen. Sometimes people got really lucky and it would happen. And the machine would just be negative on its percentage. So then after after the jackpot wins, the next little bit you play it, much less chance that you're going to win. Although you could because it was it was a little randomized. It didn't it didn't uh, work with hard limits where it just would not allow people to win until a certain uh, amount of games were played. Some of the redemption games are like that. If uh, like the stacker or whatever you win a, a toy or, you know, one of the big prizes, you physically cannot win another big prize until it gets to a certain number of games. These were not like that. This particular one may have been, but the ones that I had uh, experience with were not like that. You, uh, you actually could win two jackpots in a row. I never saw anybody do it, but that was how they were set up. Um, so yeah, so that's what we got. We're going to mess with it a little bit. Let me show you the monitor while we're at it. Great little monitor. This is a Wells Garner, I think this is the 4800. The 4900 uh, is the 19 inch one, and it's just a standard monitor. You could argue it's the best monitor they ever made because it, uh, you usually don't have problems with the flyback. And uh, other than needing a cap kit and some bad solder joints, usually these things are reliable as hell. A Wells Garner uh, K4600 was also pretty reliable, but it had a lot of kind of design flaws where they had little daughter boards that uh, would make the image jump and all kinds of stuff like that. 
Uh, and then the Wells Garner 7000, which came later, was a was a very nice monitor. Um, but they have problems where the flybacks go bad a lot. Thankfully, we can get brand new flybacks, so it's not that big of a deal. But as far as like original monitor still running, this is probably the best monitor ever. They also made the Electro Home G07, which is a nice little monitor, but it's the same thing. The flybacks go bad, and uh, they need cap kits. Once you change the flyback, though, the G07 is a very reliable monitor too. It's and it's a uh, it's super common, but this is also a really common one. So the if I had to pick of those four, I'd say this is the best monitor of the four. Or the, well, how many did I say? Four. Yeah. Um, it is the 13K 4801. Yeah, buddy. There you go. Well, that's the 4800. Okay, so uh, we're going to take this out and rebuild it, put a little cap kit in it, check the power supply, check the boards, probably clean some chips, stuff like that. Let's see if we can get anything up on the screen, and then we'll see if we can play it a little bit. But you know what I'm actually going to do first? I'm going to stop displaying it out the front window of my store since it's kind of illegal. <laughs> it, to all the police watching this, I'm not operating this. We're not doing it. I'm just fixing one for historic purposes. I just want to document the history of it. Don't come lock me up. I'm. This is the only one I've ever even had. I've never even had any of these, so don't worry about it. <laughs> all right, so we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, folks. We finished it up. Look, there's people walking by. They'd love to play it. I can't. I can't, buddy. It's illegal. I'm not allowed to let anybody play it. We have to destroy it after this video. I'm not really going to destroy it. <laughs> we're, pres we, we're preserving things, people. So, for amusement only, this is your typical old school poker machine that was all over South Carolina. Boy, people would gamble all over these things. So it says Hilo Double Up Joker Poker, but this is not that game. They, the board, one of the boards that was in it didn't work. That may have been the board. That board. The other board is Double or Nothing Raise Poker. They call it. Um, it says Game Technology Presents, but I think this is a game from Electrocoin. I think. I tried to research it a little bit. Copyright 1983, Game Technology, Inc. So, I don't know. Some of those places went out of business real quick. But we're going to play it a little bit here in a minute. For amusement only. So there's a hole in the side of it. I have no clue. Might have been some kind of locking mechanism. They uh, would put bars and stuff all over them. I don't know. There's nothing on this side, though. I don't know. Who knows? It's lost to me. It was 1983. This uh, T-molding shrinks a little bit over time, so it gets a little loose in the corners. What you can do is cut it, find the end of it, and take it loose, and then slide it down a little bit and pound it into place and reform it. But you're going to be about an inch short whenever you get all the way around. <laughs> or you can put new on it. So it's got this really nice back glass. Now let me show you the cool part. Are you ready for this? I don't know if you're ready. I told you to get ready, folks. I told, I warned you. I warned you you probably weren't ready. And yet you didn't prepare yourself. The whole thing is lit. Very cool. So you can imagine we're in the smoky... Uh, so the way they used to do them, I don't know about this particular one, but they used to have right on the state line in South Carolina, um, these like poker palaces. They had like um, turrets and stuff built on the top of the buildings so that it looked like a castle or something. And it was full of poker machines. And so there'd be all of these people sitting inside of there, just gambling their life away. I may have been related to some of those people. I never liked gambling much myself, but boy, I sure knew a lot of people who did. And uh, they would they would uh, sit in there and just gamble away. Now, 
it'd be kind of dark like this in most of them. And a lot of times, they passed a law after a while where you can't have more than three of them. So they started playing this game where they would make new laws trying to basically cut down on the gambling, right, that was happening in these machines. And so they would come up with all these different laws. Uh, and the reason that it was in South Carolina is because North Carolina had outlawed the things. So in South Carolina, though, it was wide open about... It's been 20 years, at least 20 years, probably 25 years, about 25 years ago. It was still wide open. And so they would come up with all these crazy little laws trying to cut back on this. So one of the laws was you couldn't have more than three machines in an establishment. So these big places that had like 50 games in it, and they're right over the state line. So if you drove from Charlotte, which is right on the state line, you could just drive into South Carolina. And any road that made it into South Carolina... As soon as you got into, into the state, usually, like if it was a highway, there would be a building built right there on the, on the line, just full of poker machines so people could come play them. And uh, also fireworks. So there would be fireworks places like that too because the laws in South Carolina were different than the laws in North Carolina. So as soon as you got over the state line, there were all these firework places. So anyway, uh, these poker places can't have more than three in an establishment. So these places that were really big, boy, that really messed them up, didn't it? Nope. What they did was they built little rooms inside of it, and then there was like a sign or a little thing on it. Each one was a different business. So they would make a little room that just had three poker machines in it, and you would go in and pick which one you wanted to play, or it may have been three or four. I can't remember how many it could be, but they would just divide the building up into all these little rooms. And people just be sitting in there smoking, chain smoking cigarettes, and playing the crap out of these poker machines. Now, the ones I always saw whenever I did go in those places, not to gamble any of my own money, but I just happened to be inside of there. Uh, they didn't have the ones this old because it was later. So I didn't see them until probably 97, somewhere around through there. But, the, you know, this game's from 1981, 1982, 1983, around that time. This is one of the very early ones that's why it takes quarters uh and as you'll see here in a minute this one's actually set to uh give uh, nickel credits so you're gambling with a nickel basically but uh the ones i saw were the pot of gold machines those things were hot and so they had a touch screen on it and it had you could turn on the different games because some of them were illegal depending on where the, the thing was so like kino you could turn on and off depending on where it was and they would make all these different laws, you know. Oh, you can do this, but you can't do that. You can do that, but you can't do this. And so there was a constant uh, battle by these operators to stay just on the side of the, the legal line, right? Um, but this is back before then. This is the very first run of them when they, uh, when they first started. You can imagine. I try to put myself, in my, my mind in the position of how it was back then, not knowing what we know now what we would have known back then, right? So this is 1981, 1982, 1983. Um, and up until then, you had to go somewhere to, to gamble, to play poker. You had to actually go find, uh, you know, somebody that had a poker table. You could go over to your buddy's house and gamble or something. But if you wanted to do some serious gambling, you know, you had to go to a casino somewhere. Then they came out with this, and they figured out a way to get the... the uh, the uh, um, the odds right to where it was actually possible to win on it, but yet the operator and the establishment owner still made money. Uh, you can imagine this changed the game. I mean, you could go down to the gas station and it was like you were in a casino, and there was no laws against it at the time. You know, so it was just wide the freak open. These things cost about a thousand dollars when they were new. I, t I talked to an operator about it one time. They cost about a thousand dollars new in '81. Some of the early ones. I think they first came out in '81. There may have been some before them, but I think that was the the very first ones. Video poker, and uh, they cost a thousand dollars. And he said some of the locations he put it in paid themselves off the first week. Now he was paying whatever the payout was on it, whatever people had won. Andy was paying uh, half of the profit to the location. And in, he said in many of the locations, it would pay itself off the first week. He'd get his $1,000 back. 
So you can just imagine how these things were wide open for a little while. So this was 83, but you know, a couple years had passed and they had started changing the gameplay a little bit. They were all trying to get a little foot in the door. And uh, this one they had turned into raise poker or whatever that is. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to put up the tripod. We'll play it a little bit and uh, just see if it's as fun as it looks. All right, folks. So now you can feel like you're with me in the gambling hall. You can even see the buttons and everything. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to add a bunch of credits to it. Try not to knock the tripod over when I do it. If I can reach the coin switch. Okay, so each quarter gave you five credits. So it's like you putting a nickel in, okay? So I'm gonna show you how the knockoff switch works like we talked about. So it's gonna sit on this screen. You know what, let me go turn off, let me go turn off those lights behind us so you can see it better. All right, I was able to turn it a little bit. So hopefully you can see it a little bit better. <coughs> I may have to darken the video up a little bit so that the screen doesn't blur out as much. Uh, but you can see the buttons, discard buttons are up here. And then you've got these down here. So that one says play, play credit. So I'm betting a nickel because I'm a piker. And then there is a deal button. So you hit deal. It throws you your five cards and it says you may raise. So this one's called raise poker. So what they had added to the, the, the traditional game was the ability to add more credits after you saw what your hand was going to be. Okay. So see, I see now that I've already got a pair, so maybe I'll discard everything but the pair, and then I'll go ahead and raise. Oh, let me raise one time. That was it. Okay. So then the cancel light is lit, so I can cancel the ones that I picked, and the draw light is lit. So we're going to draw. Oh yeah, it gave me the one card already, didn't it? So, yeah, so they got me. So that didn't work. So let's do two credits this time. The deal light maybe should come on. I might have to work on that. Uh, I may raise. Yeah, see, I don't know. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm, I guess I could try to get a straight. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it did not give me a card before. I just thought it did. Oh, it okay, so it let me double. That didn't work. So a pair ain't giving me crap, right? So let's go big. Let's play five. That's a whole quarter we're betting. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't see much there, people. Let's get rid of most of that. What do you think? And then whenever you do that, you have to wait a little bit before you hit draw or it won't work. It won't immediately let you draw. Look at that crap. So there, uh, on the, jo on the uh, pot of golds, it would suggest to you, like if you played you know, poker like the five card poker, it would suggest to you which ones to keep and which ones to discard. And I would watch people, so I worked for an operator that had some out on location, right? I would watch people play it, and so they would hit deal, and it would deal the five cards, and then it would suggest, get rid of this one and this one. And if you hit deal again, it you would just accept their recommendation, and it would give you two new cards. And then you either won or you lost. And that would happen. And then they'd hit deal again. And it would deal five cards. And then it would say, get rid of this one. And they'd just hit deal again. Accept the recommendation. Right? And it would just do whatever. And they'd either win or they'd lose. And then they'd hit deal again. And it would give them five cards. And it'd say, get rid of these four. And they would just hit deal again to accept it. So my whole point is, they would just continuously press the deal button. That was all they were doing. They weren't even, like, playing with it. You know, they weren't even changing what cards are discarded or anything like that. They were just hitting the button over and over again as their money dwindled away. And sometimes they would, sometimes you'd win. 
like I said earlier, it was possible to win uh, the jackpot, or nobody would play it, you know. But they would they would just hit the button over and over again, which means that basically, you know, you're just you're just doing whatever the computer is doing. I don't know if it made any difference. Mmm. Mmm. All I'm getting is pears, people. It might be because I don't know what I'm doing. What do you think? I want to win something so I can show you what at least happens when you win. Look at that. That's horrible. Uh-oh. Draw. <laughs> I had this location, this guy, he would he'd always complain that the uh, he wasn't winning enough. And he'd say, when I'd come in and he'd say, you need to loosen up the bands a little bit on that machine. Now, I don't know why he thought there were rubber bands involved. I've been getting some pairs, but not much, not much else. Wow! Okay, so I won 40. So, deal for double or nothing. And hit stand to collect. So I hit stand. And I won. Okay, so I have 74 credits on the machine. Which is... What? Well, I gotta do math. Five credits is a quarter. Twenty credits would be a dollar. So it's three dollars and not quite seventy-five cents. Okay? So I go over to the guy at the at the desk. Let's go get him. Okay. Hey! I hit the jackpot over here. I got forty credits. Yeah, I wanna cash out. Papa's got a brand new bag. Let me check. Yeah, it looks about right. It doesn't look tampered with. All right, I owe you three dollars and seventy-four cents. And so they would just hit the button on the back of the machine, and it erases the credits, and then they pay the guy whatever the credits were. <laughs> All right, so let's play it a little bit more and see if we can actually win anything. That's basically how she works. Oh, okay, see the coin at the top? It's saying there is a coin jam because I was hitting the thing too quick. I don't know how in the world you clear that either. There is a button in it. Let me try hitting this button in here. I think it's an operator button. I'll knock the tripod over. If I can reach it. There we go. I was getting... Oh man, did it do it again? Heck yeah. It didn't like how I, uh... How quick I was hitting it. Oh, I've got it stuck. That's what's going on. I think I think I had the wire stuck down. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. I'm putting 250 in. Oh, wait, a minute, is that right? No, I get five. I put two dot. What is it? A quarter gives you five credits. A dollar gives you twenty credits. I put five dollars in, people. Yep, I'm a big baller. Here we go. We'll play them ten at a time. Mmm. Don't like it. I don't like it. I may raise. Why would I do that? 
I'd like to get a straight, but that's almost impossible. You'd have to get a six, you know? Mmm. Nothing. So, of course, the more you play, the more amount you play, the more you can possibly win. Um, yeah, this, we're not doing very well. I'm saving like a 10, but I mean, you might as well save anything if you're going to do that. I'm going to go see if this guy will let me clean dishes or something to pay this off. See, like if you like how quick I did it and I hit draw, it doesn't work. You got to wait a second. Pair wins 10, I guess because it was a good enough pair. Okay, so deal for double or nothing or hit stand to collect. So let's hit deal. Double or nothing. Try low, press this. Try high, press that. So basically, this card is going to be something. Let's say it's an eight. Oh, wait a minute. No, I got that wrong. If it's if if I think it's a low number, I'm going to hit this. If I think it's a high number, I'm going to hit that. So we'll see the low. Come on now. Hey, this thing's cheap. I think it's rigged. You need to come uh, loosen up these bands a little bit. What have we got here? Not much, not much. So I got a pair, but that didn't, uh, you know, that didn't do nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? They got me with that uh, high and low. I should have known not to try that. This place is crooked. Gotta wait. Gotta wait. There we go. Mmm. Mmm. Look, look at that crap. Do you see what's going on here? Half my money's gone. And that was my last... That was my last... Uh, that was my last five dollars. So let's just save two random cards and see what happens. They want you to think about it. They don't want you to be a, a quick uh, a quick drawer. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, Matt showed up. Uh huh. Let's see. Let's see if Matt will come in and spend some money on this thing. Did you bring your quarters? Mm. Are you a member of the, uh, the, uh, 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 the Popo? No. You're not? Okay. Because, okay. uh, we're doing some highly illegal shit in here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Meth? No, I don't do that. Okay. Look, look at this beautiful thing that I've got here. So we got a poker machine. Uh-huh. Shh, don't say it so loud. I mean, you do have it by the front window. We're, well, that's all right. We're bootlegging again, you know. <laughs> hey, uh, do you have any good stories? I'm filming right now. It's live. I could tell. Do you, we're streaming all over the world. Do you have uh, any good stories about uh, uh, the old poker machines? Was your mom or your father addicted to, play, to playing them? No, all I remember is the gas station by my house. I would go in and it'd be the same guy on them every single time we went. Blowing all of his money. Yeah, I was telling him and about that. I always wanted to play because I was a kid and I was like four or five, and I just saw I just saw it was a I just saw it was a game machine, you know. I saw it was a video game. <laughs> I always didn't know why my mom wouldn't let me play. I'm about out of money. Loan me five dollars. And my draw button doesn't want to cooperate. I don't know if it's doing it on purpose or if I, it's just messed up. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so Matt's in on it. To put his money right here. 
This is what you were going for. We're trying to get my five dollars back. I'm down to my last credits, Matt. Okay, what what do you think I should hold there? I, you know, I haven't even tried to get a a, a, a flush or anything. <laughs> I don't know if you want to hold just eight and nine or eight, nine, and ten. Just eight and nine. All right. Here we go. I'm almost down to the end, folks. I'm running out of money. I got a pair, but it don't pay unless it's like ten or higher. Well, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to break this in half and just play a quarter at a time. Because all I got is 10 credits left. I see. Okay. Man. Do you go for the straight or do you go nah, for the Nah, it never works. Never works. I'm just saving the big papas and the, the royal cards, you know, in case I match one. Because then I'll get my, my uh, five okay. back at least. Gotcha. What do you think? Ah. Oh, man. Man, it's getting down to the wire here, buddy. I don't know. Ah, with well, gas is expensive as it is anyway. All I got left is a quarter. They're a nickel to play. You can't do one at a time? I could. You think I should? Well, uh, it's too late now. You've, you've committed. Yeah. Oh, buddy. It's funny they don't let you go back on that. Ah! Two pair? Ah, it's a big one. Ah, oh, man, my luck's coming back, man. Woo! Ah, oh, you showed it. You must be a good luck charm. Let me rub your... Uh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Not on camera. <laughs> I won 10. I'm back and I'm in the money. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Matt? You want to take double or nothing. If I, if I hit deal, I can do double or nothing. Yeah, let's do that. I think that's definitely what we want to do. Now, last time I hit low and I lost. So I should probably hit high because then I'll win. That's what it was last time. It was a high card. Yeah, but you... But it was high last time, which means it's going to be low this time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if I hit high, oh wait a minute, yeah. Well, this is like, am do I do I think? Uh, oh, you think it's going to be low this time? Yeah, because so high I should hit the time. same button. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do what Matt says. Yeah, Matt, you're <laughs> like you're my good luck charm. It's coming back. Hey, with all of that said, I'm way in the hole here. <laughs> yes, you are. So I could double or nothing again. And just since I got you here now, I can't possibly lose. Right. So we hit deal. Okay, and this is this has got a whole dollar on the line now, 20 credits. Okay. So what's the middle what's the higher than ten? Is that what it is? I don't know. It would be the uh it would be in the middle, I guess. So I don't know how they do it. Maybe eight. Seven and look below. The ace was high, though. They got me with the ace last time. I said low, and it hit me with the ace. Gotcha. Well, I mean, we know it went low last time, so it's obviously So it's, it's obviously going to go high this time. Yeah, you're, a, you're a software programmer, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you know how this stuff works. Yeah, this is really lazy. You just yeah, so always it's, the opposite. So it, it's got to go high this time because it went low twice yeah. before. Okay. <laughs> Matt! <laughs> Woo! We're going to Vegas! Yeah, baby. All right. So should we should we should we keep our two dollars or should I let it roll? Well, if you keep it, you can keep playing other poker hands, right? Yeah, but I mean it's kind of boring. But if I let it roll, we could yeah. get rich. Yeah, let it roll. I have two dollars. I could have four dollars if I let this roll. Now it cost me five dollars to start though. <laughs> okay, here we go. I don't know, man. I don't know. We might be pushing our luck because it went low, low, and then high. So I guess it's going to go high again. <laughs> I guess we need to go high. Yeah. Okay. So high. So high. You're sure? Yes. <laughs> Matt! <laughs> Man! Oh, my Lord! Woo! Good Lord. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I've never had this much excitement. Man, you're a lucky, lucky guy. I knew you was lucky, but I didn't know you was this lucky. Man! Holy moly! Whew. All right, so do we stand or do we do we uh, do we do we push our luck? I'm almost back to even. Well, you gotta go to you ahead. You never quit when you're behind. That's how gambling. Maybe works. I could go. Let's see. They won't let me just do part of it. Okay, we're gonna go. Okay, so it was low, low, high, high. So it's gotta go low again. So it's low. Yeah. You're sure. I'm sure. You're positive. Yeah. It's four dollars on this mat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh my lord! Ah, I 
can't look. Did I win? I won, didn't I? <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Whoo, man. It's too much. Ah, oh, oh, man. Okay. So you've got $8, right? I think I, yeah. I don't know how many I got. I've done lost track. 80 plays. Now this time I would win 160. That would be more money than I've ever had in my life, man. You don't understand how important this is. Whew. What do you think? Should I stand? Is that a bad luck omen? The, the money fell over. Hmm. That's a sign from God, isn't it? Well, you're ahead, right? I'm ahead. No, I'm not ahead. I started with 100, <laughs> but I'm at 80 right now. Oh, well, you, you could never stop when you're behind. That's true. Yep. So I kind of have to. I don't really have a choice. Look, you can't lose money till you stop playing. Okay, here we go. All right. So, <clears throat> so it was low, low, high, high, low. So it has to be low. No, it might. They might be doing two lows, two highs, one low, one high. Mm. Them all we need time. somebody's opinion. Mm. There's nobody. Nobody to ask. The guy that runs this place, I think, is a drunk. He's been in the back for like an hour. Okay. We could flip a coin. No, that, that would... I don't think that would work. We couldn't flip I don't a have a coin anyway. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Low, low. High, high. Low. You're a software engineer. Now, you should know this. I mean, I'm going to say low again. Low. Okay. Yep. So, you've been you've been right like five times in a row or something. You can't be wrong. Right. Okay, low. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Woo! Man! Happy times are here again. Now I'm ahead. So do you keep going? Or do I'm you ahead. Get... I look at all the money I've made. I made $3. I've got eight bucks, Matt. Read it and weep. So how do you get your money back? I go tell the guy that runs this place, and he comes over and pays me for what it says, and then he hits a little switch on the back. They call it a knockoff switch, and it makes all the credits go away. But if I hit Stan... Gonna give me 160 points. I think we got to. I don't think we can keep pushing our luck. No, no. What do you think? Once you're ahead, you gotta stop. All right, so you hit stand. It says you win because I'm a winner. So it was low, low, high, high, low, low. Yep. So it's like the freaking Konami code. <laughs> we could, it's the Konami code. We could have done the whole thing up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select, start. What would be BA and start? I don't know. You're the software guy. What? Oh man! Oh my God! I got I got confused. I was really at 320 credits. Oh, there you go. So this is how you win, folks. This is how you win. We could have asked that guy. So that was uh, so you got so you got 16 dollars. Mm-hmm. So you made eleven dollars. Sixteen bucks, people. So there you go. Don't tell me these things are rigged. You saw how it works. I turned five dollars into uh, how much did you say it was? Sixteen, right? <laughs> Sixteen dollars. It's that's nickels. Oh. Uh, uh, no, wait a minute. Each. You said ten was a quarter. You put a quarter in, you get five credits. Oh, quarter. So each five. each credit's a nickel. So it's not three dollars and twenty cents. It's fifty. It's sixteen bucks. Yep. Sixteen dollars. Yep. So yeah, twenty. So. so all you all you haters out there that say these things are rigged. Look, we took we took five imaginary dollars and turned it into sixteen imaginary dollars. Now I just got to go talk this drunk into giving me uh, my sixteen dollars. Oh, Matt's trying to pay me off. <laughs> yep. All right, folks. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can see how fun this could be. You can see how the gambling could get you carried away. That's why they had to outlaw it so they could bring in the lottery, which is completely safe and has nothing to do with gambling. So they, Matt, did, were you uh, paying attention back whenever they made the laws about these things? I was. You you were younger. It's been about twenty five years. I was in. I think I was in eighth grade. So, the politicians were all saying we have to outlaw. The poker machines because it's a scourge on the society the gambling is destroying the uh the uh the thread the the thread <laughs> the thread of civilization so they outlawed the poker machines at the exact same time that they brought in the education lottery the lottery that they call the education lottery but poor people played a lottery 
and middle class and rich people go to college. So that's kind of... They're having poor people play the lottery to send rich people's kids to college. Well, you're, they're having poor people pay... And the government's getting a whole bunch of the money. Well, they're having poor people... They weren't getting none of this money, and they knew it. So they were very upset about that. <laughs> you know what's funny, actually? What? Charlotte. They don't have poker machines in the gas stations, but they do have sweepstakes machines. Oh, yeah, with the card. I was telling them earlier about how the laws, they would find ways to work around the laws. Yeah. So the they, sweepstakes machines, you buy a little ticket, and it's got a little thing that you scratch off, and... But that no, I like that. It's not there. specifically illegal yet. So. That's up there today. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they've got the ones that are connected to the internet. Yeah. Because if you're connected to the internet, you're not gambling in Charlotte. You're gambling in Ohio or Zimbabwe or the, wherever the server is. The, uh, the Caribbean. Yeah, the Caribbean. It's 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 a free for all in the Caribbean. <laughs> all right, folks. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. We had fun playing it. These things are illegal though, so I'm going to go destroy it now. So that uh, we don't get in any trouble. So law enforcement, if you're watching, we were just doing this for historic purposes. It says right there for amusement only. And uh, it was destroyed after the video. I hope you enjoyed it, people. Leave your comments down below and let us know what you think. Hey, Matt, have you been using my uh, Amazon link? Every single day. I have, I have redesigned my website, lionsarcade.com. You go to the parts page. I have all of the stuff we use in our videos to do repairs on there. And now I'm telling people where uh, it comes from. Made in Japan, made in Germany, made in the United States. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, obviously, you, you don't, you want, you want the German stuff. You want the exactly Japanese stuff. Yeah. Exactly, that's right? the good. Stuff. So that's the quality stuff. Yeah. So, so uh, go check that out, people. If you haven't, if you click one of our links down below to go to Amazon, uh, it basically gives us a percentage of whatever you choose to buy on Amazon. So if you're buying like an oil filter for your car, we get three percent. If you're buying uh, a joke, a Joker poker poker machine maybe it's legal in your state we get three percent so we appreciate everybody that's been doing that and last but not least don't forget to check out my brother donnie my brother has a channel here on youtube uh that's like ours just because he's crazier than we are isn't that true matt yes yes yeah. matt knows donnie so he has met him the man the myth the legend uh so we work on pinball machines arcade games jukeboxes we never work on these poker machines because the police have told us not to mess with them but we got this one here. When we, when we first opened up, the police came by, I promise you, and told us, do not sell poker machines. Well, all right. Then. They ain't cool with that. They don't like them. They're illegal. Right? So we don't sell poker machines. Right? All right. Um, but uh, we, we work on arcade games, pinball machines, jukeboxes. My brother, Donnie. Works on old buildings, old vehicles, things like that. So uh, go check his channel out. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed us having some fun with this thing. We will see you on the next video. Save your money, people.